we drove through the beautiful countryside, the unexpected and the unpaved roads, passing the vast meadows. But suddenly, we crashed our drone onto the track. Fortunately, the nice local family who owns the farm let us enter the meadows and search the drone. We recovered it safe and sound. But it was a task to recover it from in between the tall wild grass which was knee high long. We are now driving towards our Airbnb in Monteverde. After a long drive for around 3 hours from La Fortuna, we reached our Airbnb at night. Little did we know, we woke up to this beautiful sunrise and a rainbow at the end of it. Our eyes filled with bewilderment of the beautiful sight of these mountains. This property is owned by a Costa Rican family who was very warm and very welcoming. This is a two bedroom house with a living room and a fully functional kitchen. They have a large farmland where they raise cows and grow various crops. And this is our host Jessica giving us a farm tour. The view is amazing, right Amo? Yep. And there's two dogs in this farm. I love dogs. This is the greenhouse. We have some plants. We stayed there in the month of August and it was supposed to be rainy season. We really enjoyed the downpour the most as it made the place look even more poetic and scenic. After two days, it was time to bid adieu to this place. We couldn't get enough of these beautiful mountains that we kept taking short breaks from driving to enjoy these mountains. And in the meanwhile, kids knew 
how to entertain themselves and of course out of necessity. We are now driving to see the main tourist attraction of Monte Verde, the Cloud Forest. We walked into the scene where a raccoon was having its lunch, a rat. Pretty gruesome, isn't it? The trails of over 8 miles can be explored by ourselves or with a guide. We decided to explore it ourselves. We walked until the first hanging bridge from where we can get a breathtaking view of the abandoned green cloud forest below and around. Cloud forests take their name from their very literal nature. Low hanging clouds that often looks like fog hover around the upper canopy of the forest before condensing onto the leaves of the trees and dripping out onto the plants below. The sun has a hard time breaking through the thick veil of clouds. Hence, it is very wet here always. The weather is so cozy that our little boy sank into a cozy nap on his stroller. It was so thick that by looking down, we could hardly see the ground below. We were really hungry after that hike and were so ready to have an early dinner. We then drove to the west coast to explore the beaches there. Costa Rica is famous for its beautiful beaches as well. As there are several beaches in the west coast, it was hard for us to decide where to spend the most time in. We finally decided to visit Manuel Antonio. While driving to Manuel Antonio, we decided to take a short break in Punta Arenas. This is the port town on Costa Rica's Gulf Nicoya. There are shops and cafes and it is good for a relaxing stroll and people watching. We have now reached our hotel and it has a stunning view to the Manuel Antonio beach and it also has a lush jungle in front of it where we could see monkeys and different varieties of birds. Manuel Antonio is a stunning beach protected by a national park of the same name and it is framed by a lush crescent bay. The surrounding national park is filled with incredible wildlife. Look up in the trees, you will spot howler monkeys, iguanas and sloths.
there are several beaches along the way. Jacko Beach is famous for surfing. We have now returned to San Jose and as per the original plan, we started exploring San Jose. But to be honest, there wasn't much that impressed us here. All we could see was the crowded streets, traffic and the usual city-like vibe. decided to drive away in search of mountains again. We were amazed that just about 1.5 hours drive away is a gorgeous waterfall named La Paz. We are now heading towards the waterfall. The drive was beautiful and the scenery was amazing. The waterfall is located immediately alongside the road from Alajuela that leads to the northern plains of Costa Rica. The river La Paz forms the waterfall after traversing 8 kilometers of volcanic terrain and then continues through the rainforest of the eastern side of Pao's volcano. The waterfall and the surrounding area were severely damaged in the 6.1 magnitude earthquake of January 2009. This was our last stop in Costa Rica and the next day we returned to San Francisco.